Hello, welcome to another practice problem. Today we're going to do problem 8.58 out of the textbook. Uh, this problem reads, uh, determine the normal stresses acting at points H and K for the structure shown. The cross-sectional dimensions of the vertical member are shown here. So if we look at this uh, cross-sectional member, uh, the first thing that we can determine are the sectional properties. So we can say that the area of this member is going to be uh, 4 times 8, so that's 32, we're in inches, so that'll be inches squared. Moment of inertia is going to be A, B, uh, I apologize, it's going to be B, H cubed over 12 for a rectangle. So we'll call the base 4, the height 8, and over 12 that equals 170.67 inches to the fourth. And from basic statics, we can sum our moments in the y direction, uh, sum our moments in the y, and we get the axial forces to be, uh, let's see, 1200 pounds plus 2800 pounds going to equal 4,000 pounds. And then sum our moments about, uh, I guess, a point, any point. We can sum our moments about just this hinge right here. And so our moment sub z is then going to equal um, 1,200 pounds, because that's this 1,200 pounds acting out here, right? So 1,200 pounds multiplied to the moment arm uh, which is 12 inches away uh, from the outer edge, right? But if it's from the outer edge, then we are going to be uh, from the centroid to this edge is 4 inches. So 12 um, plus half of that distance, right? So 12 plus that half of 8, which is 4. And multiplying this out, we should get a value of moment equaling 9, uh, sorry? 19,200 pound inches, okay? So from doing this, uh, we can then start working out what are the uh, actual stresses, right? So our normal axial stress, right, is just force divided by area, right? So our axial force we just calculated is 4,000 pounds, so 4,000 pounds divided by the area that I solved for earlier, so 32 inches squared, and this will equal 125 pounds per square inch. And just from observation, I mean, if we're going to be calculating our, our H and K values down here at the bottom, and all of our forces are up here acting down, I mean, just through observation, we can determine that this will be in compression. So now we can determine our uh, bending stress, right, which will be the moment we calculated earlier, multiplied to our C value and our moment of inertia. So this will be our bending moment, 19,200 pound inches, multiplied to C, but what's C? Well, C is going to be from the uh, neutral axis to the farthest point out, right, that's our C, so that will be 4 inches, divided by our moment of inertia, which is 170.67 inches to the fourth, and this will equal uh, 450 uh, PSI. Now, is this tension or compression? Well, that depends. Um, this is, we're going to put both C or T, depending on what you're talking about. Because if you look here at our actual diagram, our bending moment is applied here, right? This is where our actual bending moment that's, at, that's uh, applied to this member. So if we're going to have a rotation that's acting this direction about these points, then H here is going to be in compression, and K 
is going to be in tension because it's pulling away, right? You think about this this diagram. If we've got our diagram here of uh, our members, here's H and here's K. You know, if I uh, apply a moment that's acting this direction, then this portion here is going to be pulled away from itself, and this portion here is going to be pushed in, right? So, knowing that and thinking about that, what we can then do with these values that we just solved for, we can say, well, the summation of them, so our stress at H is going to equal our negative 125 PSI, and since we have a compression on that side, it will be the negative 450 PSI, and then that will equal a negative uh, 575 PSI, so that's going to equal 575 PSI and compression, and that's our stress at H. So our stress at K then equals, again it's going to be in compression due to the axial stress, so it'll be a negative 125 PSI. But the bending stress is going to be positive because it's in tension, so we're going to add 450 to it, PSI, and then that will equal 325 PSI. And that's positive, so that's in tension. And there you go.